Hey everyone, Matt from Strong View here, and today we're going through our next piece in our intermediate programming series. So uh, this series is really aimed at lifters who are coming out of the novice phase of lifting, who've done programs, things like uh, strong lifts, starting strength, that kind of very linear periodization, very set, set and rep structures, uh, and are looking to learn to personalize their program and keep making gains in the long run, as well as learning some key concepts. So next piece we're going through today is how to deload as an early intermediate. Now, uh, traditionally, a lot of the programs we've talked about so far, and uh, including the plus four minus one and plus four minus two program, have both gone through this very steady set and rep scheme, and our only variation in the program has really come from uh, periodizing our load that we're using on the bar. So this might be with a plus four minus two structure, 100, 125, 105, 107, five for kilos on a bench press, let's just say. And then we'd back cycle two steps, go to 1025, so we go 1025, 105, 175, and then up to 110. So just kind of gradually adding a couple of kilos every month. As you start to progress with this, you'll find it's harder and harder to add even two and a half kilos a month to your bench press. And the next step is to start incorporating a little bit more undulation and how much volume you're using in your training. And just again, as we progress as lifters, we need to factor recovery into your training and manage that fatigue a little bit better. So the best way we can manage fatigue on the program side of things is a reduction in volume. More so than just reducing intensity where you're just reducing the weight on the bar, actually reducing your total workload. So multiplying out your load times your sets times your reps is going to give you uh, your total volume and then making sure that you're reducing how much you're doing strategically is going to be enough to help you manage fatigue and help you recover a little bit more and have certain periods where you're focusing more on recovery and that's what these deload weeks are going to be about so we're going to make a couple assumptions as we're writing this program uh, assumption one is that you're operating on a four-week structure so if you take five or six or seven weeks to peak or three weeks to peak adjust accordingly, right? Uh, and the second thing we're gonna assume here is that you're using a plus four minus two structure as we talked about a second ago. So uh, like I mentioned, traditionally, your workload is, or your workload's gonna stay fairly similar uh, and you're just working on increasing your load on the bar periodically. So taking into account just a rough guess here, right? Uh, five by five with 100 pounds works out to about 2,500 pounds of volume, right? If we do a five by five with 1075, it's going to work out to roughly about 2,700 pounds of volume, give or take, right? The idea with what we're trying to work into the deload here is instead of having this higher intensity and higher volume week relative to the rest of them, and then not a big change in volume as we go into the next block, is we want to incorporate a little bit of training, uh, training recovery here. So instead of doing the fives, we might do five sets of three. So this keeps things really simple from the programming front because you're only really messing with two variables at this point. You're messing with load on the bar and you're talking about your, your reps, right? Sets can stay fairly constant because we're multiplying out. Now, uh, if we go through this, it's going to work out to about 60%. So somewhere in the ballpark of about 1,800 pounds of volume compared to your 2,700, right? Um, again, this is just the starting point. The specifics of it aren't set in stone here. So if you find you do a little bit better with uh, say five doubles instead, and you know, you're working at closer to a thousand pounds or 1100 pounds of volume. Great. That, that it's just going to take some experimentation to find what's going to work best for you. Right. But the concept that we're talking about here is really just reducing volume by dropping the reps. You're going to reduce your uh, perceived exertion as well and your proximity to failure. So if you're doing sets of five at 105 on week three, and let's say it's an RPE nine or one rep in reserve, Going up to 107.5 for triples is probably actually going to be a little closer to about a 7 or an 8 RPE for you, so two or three reps in the tank. And as a result, not only is there less workload there, but the workload that's there, um, your proximity to failure is a little bit lower. So on top of reducing volume, you're actually building a little bit more recovery by having the sets themselves not be as taxing in the first place. So then we would simply go back to our week one, five by five, weeks one through three, and then five triples at 110. So what I really like about this is it helps us to keep intensity high, which for uh, more novice lifters, they'll tend to detrain a little bit quicker compared to uh, more advanced lifters where they don't need as much or as constant exposure to higher loads in order to keep their fitness or their, their strength basically high. So this works really well for those more early intermediate and novice trainees where we're looking to 
make sure that they're getting enough recovery where they can still progress and they're not just beat up all the time, but also playing the other side of that coin and making sure that this deload week, our opportunity cost stays low with it. We're not detraining a bunch and where you're coming into, so let's say we did a week at 50% and then we would just end up with, let's say a five by five at 52.5 kilos instead, right? Uh, that is probably fine, but they're gonna come into their week one of the program and 102.5 is probably gonna feel pretty heavy, right? They don't have enough time with that level of strength to really hold on to it and not need constant exposures to it. So something to consider there. Uh, and that's that's really all I, wanted, all I wanted to go through today is just talking about some really simple ways you can start implementing some deloads and again, building more recovery into your program and managing fatigue better as you progress as a lifter. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.